Thanks for joining us this week on Email Geeks at Home Drinking Coffee. Join your hosts, Chris Marriott and Paul Schreiner each week as they talk email marketing, life, purpose, faith, but mainly email marketing. If you're looking for some normalcy in these crazy times, you've come to the right place. Uh, welcome back. Welcome to Email Geeks at Home Drinking Coffee. We're still at home and we're still drinking coffee. Uh, my name is Paul Schreiner, I'm one of the hosts here, uh, one of the founders of Audience Point, one of our sponsors, and with me I have my friend, Chris Marriott. Delighted to be here, as always, Paul Schreiner, and yes, I am Chris Marriott. I am the co-host of Email Geeks at Home Drinking Coffee, and also uh, president and founder of Email Connect, one of our two sponsors, and I'm going to take the prime sponsorship role this week. Email Connect uh, is a company designed to help brands select the right email partners. You want to select the right places to stop on your road trips, and that illusion will become apparent shortly. And you also want to make the right choice when picking an ESP. We can help you with the latter. Email Connect, give us a call. Uh, also brought to you by our good friends at Audience Point. And on that topic of the right thing, I mean, we're talking with marketers. And uh, uh, fundamentally, marketing is about sort of connecting people with the right product, with the right thing, right? And at Audience Point, we've been sort of really just delving, diving into the data to connect sort of um, uh, marketers with the right outcomes. And so that's been a really fantastic uh, thing, just ferreting through loads and loads of data and i know only a nerd would say that but you know chris raising my hand i'm the one yeah, we're the nerd. one and uh you know because of that we get to do things like this so uh thanks audience point thanks email connect and uh chris would you tell us a little bit about our guest today yeah today thank you today, well as everyone she, knows she's rad by the way yes uh as everyone knows the theme of this uh uh, season has been the builders. Today we have a rebuilder. We're delighted to have right. Stephanie Stuckey, uh, who's third generation. Uh, uh, she's the CEO of Stuckey's Corporation, a third generation in that role. Uh, and she's really joined the company that her grandfather founded to rebuild an absolutely iconic yes. American brand that, uh, again, as I, if you're of a certain age, uh, and went on family road trips in the car. Uh, they were ubiquitous along highways. Uh, Stucky's a friendly place to stop for gas, for pecan rolls, for mm -hmm. uh, a meal, uh, and, 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 and even to walk your coffee, dog yeah. for coffee. So uh, we're not going to make you wait any longer. We're going to go jump right into the episode with uh, Stephanie. We hope you have a great one. You're uh, going to love us. it. Yep. Oh. Welcome back to Email Geeks at Home Drinking Coffee. We're really excited uh, for our guest today, who is Stephanie Stuckey. And she's the CEO of iconic American brand, yes. Stuckey's Corporation. Um, prior to taking the reins of so the family business, and it is a family business, in November of last year, 2019, uh, Stephanie, who holds a Bachelor of Arts and Law degrees from University of Georgia, Bulldogs, practiced law and served seven terms in the Georgia legislature. More, re more recently, she was Chief Resilience Officer for the City, city of Atlanta. That's an interesting title. We may dive into that. Probably. And Director of Sustainability Services for South Face Institute, an Atlanta-based nonprofit. But we're really here to talk about Stuckey's. And so we'd like to welcome you to the show, Stephanie. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Um, Paul, do we want to start with the obligatory, what are we drinking? Or, or, and, uh, I feel like that's the right answer. Yes, Chris. Yes. Yes. Well, then, Paul, please kick it off. You know what well, I like I, to, you, you always, you know, I like to. <laughs> I'm just going to grab, I'm, I'm drinking coffee today, Chris, but with it, I'm also having a, a pecan log roll. Did I say that right? Thank you. I say pecan, but I'm from middle Georgia. My grandfather said it depended on the price and who was buying. So if he That's was up true. in New York City, he'd say pecan. And then in South Georgia, we say pecan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Being that I'm from Tennessee, you know, a longtime local. Yeah. I say pecan too. Mm. Yeah. 
Thank oh. you. And I've got a, all right, since there's a Zoom component, I'll yeah. just have to say for the podcast listeners, I've got this sticker and it says, remember me, Stuckies. And then I've got another one that I'll, I'll see if I can find it that says it's P-E-E-C-A-N. P -E -E right. So right. I, I had those stickers made just to settle that critical debate for once and for all. It is P-E-C-A-N according to me. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I was and I so might eat one too because I happen to have a few of these around. It's weird that we both have them, Chris. You should have. You really should have. them everywhere. This is Me our too. new Me Big too. Daddy log roll. It's oh. 10 ounces. <laughs> and uh, we're rebranding and we have to rebrand one package at a time because we yeah. have to run through inventory. Uh -huh. yeah. So uh -huh. I'm learning all this stuff as I'm diving into running the family's business. You can't just overnight say we're changing all the packaging because no. You order up like a hundred thousand boxes at any given time to save cost mm -hmm. per unit is cheaper as volume increases, obviously. So it will take us a couple of years to roll out the new branding, but we ran out of the big daddy log roll packaging. So I love the new design. It's got yeah. a little happy family car. It's got my grandfather's original signature. Love it. Which I just love that logo was his yeah. signature. And it's what a lot of people associate with Stucky. So we're going back to our roots. So truckers will eat this huge log roll right. in one sitting. <laughs> well, this is the I, trucker special. I, I have to say, I had it here in my notes to uh, trip Paul up on the pronunciation of pecans. Um, so I'm, I'm very disappointed that you didn't get it wrong and you beat me to it. So, uh, well played, Paul. Well played. Um, Chris, you're the only one not eating a pecan log roll. That was weird, Chris. You know what? I, you listen, I looked for the nearest Stuckies near me. I, I am broadcasting from downtown Lake Forest, Illinois. And there isn't one near me. Now, I will be driving down to Alabama mm -hmm. on Saturday on Route 65, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that there will be a Stuckey's opportunity on Route 65. I know back in the day, there absolutely would have been. Um, yeah. and, if, and if there isn't one now, there will be. So um, again, that, that, that's part of the excitement of that trip of discovery will be, is there a Stuckey's between Chicago and Fairhope, Alabama? And uh, I gotta I will encourage report back. You to pick up a, a pecan log roll. Just, uh, yeah, and I, I will send you, and I can make this available to your readers. I recently had a really nice PDF map done that was based on an original store locator from the 1960s that shows where all of our current locations are. And okay. one of our very best stores, I've, I've been on a mission to visit every store personally this year and I'm, almost, I'm about two thirds done. And I was just at our store. We have two locations in Illinois and one of them is absolutely one of my favorites. It's in Johnston City, Illinois. Mm -hmm. And they have all these statues around the property they have the um venus de milo replica <laughs> at a stuck and then they have this monument to veterans war veterans i mean it's just the craziest thing like the owner did a statuary nice. on the grounds of a stuckies which i just think embodies what stuckies is all about which is just totally roadside kitsch americana mm -hmm. and the store is chock-a-block of our classic kitschy souvenirs, you know, like ashtrays that are shaped like the toilet that say, put your butts here. <laughs> but really quality. I mean, it's quality right. kitsch. It's, it's classy. It's classy right. kitsch. <laughs> I mean, we're ham and egg, so we fit. Right, right, right. Now, 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 before we get too far removed. I know, I'm sorry. I'm way getting ahead of myself. <laughs> that, that's fine. It's but, the sugar. But, but, but <laughs> no, that doesn't hurt. But, there's a tradition yeah. on this show uh, that Paul knows is coming uh, when we're talking about what we're drinking. So we need to finish that. So Paul, you're not drinking, you're eating. Is that, is that your final? No, I'm drinking. I, I have just a cup of uh, a Americano. My son made it for me actually right before this, this call. So that, okay. And, and Stephanie, I noticed you had a, an iconic Stucky's mug. Uh, what's in it? Well, we're changing the mugs around too, by the way. This is an older design and I actually really like this one, but our new mug designs are going to be awesome. And I'm I'm getting them, I'm signing the order today to 
to get those in production. But I, I'm, I hate to say I'm actually drinking tea right now because I have yeah. already had two cups of coffee. Ah. So I just gotta, I gotta um, pace myself. I usually get up around five, 5.30 in the morning. So at this time of day, I've already had a couple of cups. So I right. switched to tea, but then I'll have another cup of coffee in the afternoon. I do the okay. same. But Good, I drink and, and Cafe Campesino roasted coffee, which is certified Georgia grown, just like oh. Stuckey's is. Our products are Georgia grown certified. And I, I love that for straight. I didn't know you even, even could grow coffee in, in Georgia. So no, they uh, roast it. Yeah. Oh, they roast it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they roast it. So, so I, I should drinking... say um, Georgia grown certified doesn't necessarily mean that everything is Georgia grown, but like yeah. it's produced in Georgia. So they, they, they are, a, I think they're actually called a Georgia grown company as opposed to Georgia grown certified products. Mm -hmm. So there is a bit of a distinction, but all that's to say it is a Georgia based company and they roast the beans in America's Georgia, right down from where Jimmy Carter lives. Love okay. It. Well, and fun fact, which we are, which we love to give on this show, um, which is totally not related to coffee, but uh, for cigar aficionados out there, um, most of the wrapper, cigar wrapper, everybody thinks this cigar is from Cuba, this cigar is from, from Dominican Miami. Republic, but most of the Would you say Miami? <laughs> yeah, I would think that. Yes. Regardless of where your cigar comes from, the tobacco that's used to wrap it, the leaves to wrap it, most likely comes from the great state of Connecticut. So little known fact, but but true. Really? Look it up. If you don't trust me, look it up. But anyway, my coffee here uh, is uh, from the Dominican Republic. Oh, is it? I'm back to can Santo Domingo, um, and and uh, I've been drinking Santo Domingo ever since my trip uh, to Dominican Republic uh, two years ago this uh, Thanksgiving. I bet that was nice. And, and and Paul might have been able to try it, but Paul. Uh, you longtime listeners and viewers may remember Paul was due to have a vacation there uh, last, I believe it was April or March. And, April, yeah, March, and, end of March. And it was an all expense paid vacation all at the expense, exclusive yep. VIP Hard Rock Hotel. But that didn't happen, Paul, did it? No, it didn't, Chris. The COVID. Ah, so the what COVID. was cool is instead of getting to go there with my bride, I got to stay home with all five of our kids and have family time, which was really which, special special time yeah no i'm sure i'm sure uh okay let's now let's get back to stuckey's so yes so stuckey's was started by your grandfather uh yes. back in i know it says founded 1937 but i believe 1931 was actually when he started his roadside uh, side stand stand with yeah that's with your like grandmother, side hustle started yeah, that grandma's mother ethel uh which in fact is your first name you're named after her um but i am I like that. Not not it's too many apples these name. days. Yeah, it's it's a dying name. Uh, the U.S. Vital Records Bureau every year publishes like the top ten names that are dying, and Ethel consistently stays mm -hmm. on that list. That's I'm doing sad. my part though. I'm right. keeping the name alive. <laughs> Getting back out there. That's right. And uh, so he started this roadside stand in in '31, but he actually launched his first brick and mortar in 37. So that's, that's right. how the, the store, the chain dates itself. Um, and through the post-war, you know, the, it really took off from what, it, you know, as you know, the post-war auto boom, the interstate highway bill yes. boom, suddenly. And so there was, you know, suddenly at, in 1971, there were 350. So big boom. And for anybody, right. anybody of a certain age who took road trips and, I, and I'm of that certain age and, and Paul probably is as well. I mean, they were, Stuckies were ubiquitous. And, and in fact, seeing a Stuckies said you were on the open road. I mean, there was, right, there was right. like, we're, we're on the open road. It's happening. It's real. Um, that was sort of the, uh, the you know, the, the clue that, that you were out on the open road, which, which was great. And I think, you know, that, and, and I know your goal is to bring that iconic brand, you know, bring that experience back because by the time, um, you know, I also know that, that, and I'm interested in this story because your grandfather sold it uh, to, to the suits and, to the suits. Right. but your father bought it back in the early seventies. I think it was, uh, no, mid eighties. No, yeah. In yeah. 84, I think it was. 
Um, yeah, your grandfather sold it in 85, but that's close. That's close okay. enough for government purposes. Right. So your dad, so your dad bought it back in 85. And at that point, it was down to about 100 um, yeah. uh, stores. And I know today if that number is even, even lower. substantially lower than that. Um, so talk about, you know, talk about, you know, your grandfather selling it, your dad rebuying it. And, and finally, the boardroom coup where you took over after <laughs> serving with your dad and, and being alone in running the organization, because that's a great story. Yeah, well, thank you. It's, it's a whole lot to absorb, so I'll try to be high level. But in, any, in, in many ways, I think Stucky's story is synonymous with, with the story of the American road trip. Sure. We came of age, like you said, post World War II, that huge housing construction boom parlayed over to my grandfather being able to find affordable labor, affordable materials to start rapidly scaling his roadside establishment. He didn't do anything different from what a lot of other roadside establishments were doing. They were prolific. You would pull over and see people, mom and pop operations. They were selling homemade candy. They were selling kitschy souvenirs and quilts and local jams and jellies and they might have in the back a, a petting zoo and <laughs> it was just classic americana right yeah. and my grandfather took that great concept and he scaled it and he yeah. branded it in a way that nobody else did right he really was a master at marketing and he was also incredibly resilient and not easily dissuaded and he would see, I mean, I know this is a little trite, but you know, it's not a challenge, it's an opportunity. It's easy yeah. to say that's another thing to live it. I cannot tell you how many times he had devastating things happen. Like he almost went under during World War II, during sugar rationing, right? right? But he just kept on plugging away. He sold sugar to the troops. He dealt with the black market mafia and bought sugar from them until the FBI shut that down. <laughs> He There's just, a movie I mean, in it's, that. Right. It's an amazing story. Yeah, and by the way, we were featured in The Irishman. So the mob oh. really does like Stucky's Pecan Log Rolls. We're in scene number three. So you don't have to watch eight hours or however long that movie is. You can watch the first 15 minutes. Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci's characters meet at a Stucky's. I did wow. not realize that. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. So I digress. So... My grandfather was incredibly resilient and he starts building these stores. He's profitable. And then what happens? Eisenhower passes the Interstate Act, right? Yep. All his stores are bypassed. A lot of people would have just gone under. My grandfather just moved right on over to the interstate and kept the stores going and grew them. That's and it got to the point where he just couldn't manage the company anymore. Yeah. financially or just staffing wise and so he he sold to a larger company pet dairy corporation he remained head of the stuckey's division of pet for another decade got it then the ceo who was head of pet that had brought my grandfather on and they were very close he died suddenly of a heart attack in his 40s my grandfather was largely pushed aside then just a it was a perfect storm of bad things happened all at once my grandfather dies. The visionary founder dies in 1977. There's an oil embargo. People quit right, driving as much because they can't afford to. And then there's the Airline Deregulation Act. So air travel is cheaper. Yep. So Stuckey's, our heyday, and I hope we'll have it again, was the Great American Road Trip. Right. The Great American Road Trip began to fade. Stuckey's began to fade. I mean, I just feel like we are part of America's traveling dna yeah 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 for sure yeah. and then my dad my dad had his own career his own he was in congress he started a wonderfully profitable company called interstate dairy queen corporation so he had the franchise rights to dairy queen stores on the interstate highway he was doing his own thing the company that bought the company that bought stuckies we were shuttered they treated the brand like crap they yep. didn't get us it was the chicago railroad conglomerate that had taken us on it was terrible. And they basically gave my dad the stores back because they were just hemorrhaging money. They were done. My dad kept studies going. He was running a bunch of other companies, but he got it back in the family. And then a decade ago, my dad uh, and all his partners pretty much uh, retired. Warren Buffett bought out their Dairy Queen company. 
and they did very well with that. And they left Stuckey's being run by a skeleton crew. Got and it. last last year, my dad's former partners came to me and said, do you want to buy Stuckey's? And I had my own career. I was an environmental lawyer. I headed up sustainability and resilience for the city of Atlanta. And I thought, how often do you get a chance? These Seriously? amazing, wonderful brands right. fall out yeah. of family hands. They get taken over by corporations. And I'm not bashing corporations, but I will just a little bit because sometimes we lose sight of what made a brand special. They just, they just suck it out and they want to make a profit. And of course, I want to make a profit. I want to be profitable, but that's not my mission. My right. mission is not that. My mission is we're going to revive the Great American Road Trip and we're going to revive what's special about pulling over and discovering these fun places. And even if you can't drive to a Stuckey's, you can buy our product. We can bring the road trip to you. Right. And since taking over, we've, we're now in um, almost 200 retailers. We're That's in awesome. Ace Hardware's. We're in Hallmark stores. We're in Dollywood. And so <laughs> you can you can buy our products anywhere. You don't have to pull over at a Stuckey's. But I want that special feeling. I yeah. want to bring that back. Yep. So well, I, go ahead, Chris. Well, I was going to say, so... So then, so you bought out your dad's partners, but your dad still had his share. And yeah, um, I bought him out six months he. later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bought dad out six months later. Yeah, that I'm, I'm sure that I'm sure that that's a, I'm sure there's a, a, a great story of boardroom intrigue in there, and maybe we'll save that for. A... <laughs> I will just say I love my father very much. He's a brilliant businessman. I greatly respect him, but. There can only be one Stucky heading up. There Stucky. can be only one. For the kids at home who are listening or watching, again, it, it, you know, car, long trips in cars, interstate trips in cars, and, and places like Stucky's, I know are, are you know, not the experiences that, that you've had, and yet they are, they are experiences that your parents or even your grandparents had that that you know helped shape their whole experience with this country and i think yeah. you know one of the things well and, and you know one of the things that the pandemic i mean you know ha has has you know created i think an opportunity and i hate to say an opportunity because it sounds like it's it but but that's the right word chris but well no, but I it's a fact so. it's a fact that people are taking more trips in the car yeah. to to they don't want to get on planes these right. days they want to get out of the house they want to go on a vacation yep. but they don't yeah. want to get on a plane what's drive for right for you know reason so they're getting in their cars again so there has been a shift back to getting in a car and and driving somewhere yeah. um maybe that's closer but that still gets you out on the interstate and you know it, it, it is is that something that you think stuckies will be able you know assuming that that trend continues even when air travel becomes something that people are are not as concerned as they are at the moment. Um, you know, do you think the habit of of the road trip might might get a bit a little bit ingrained again and, and be a, be an advantage as you try to grow the brand back out and the locations back out? I sure do, and I'm encouraged by some of the statistics that I'm looking at. Like RV sales are up forty percent, so even once there is a vaccine, people are still gonna have those RVs. And right. <laughs> I think once you learn that lifestyle, it, it is not just a short term, oh, let's take a trip. It's a lifestyle, it's a yeah. choice. And I think once you discover that and, and realize what fun it is, I, I really earnestly believe that the road trip is due for not just a short term comeback, but no, I agree. A whole new generation of people are going to read us or discover for the first time the fun of it. Yeah, I will say one of my biggest challenges, and I'm very authentic in what I put out there in social media and our communications, mm -hmm. that we are a fixer upper. Some of our stores don't look that great. <laughs> and I am working hard to rebrand, rebuild but it's hard. They're all franchise owned. We don't have any corporate owned stores. So that limits your control not to get right. too in the weeds, but my legal background is helping me. I'm in the process of 
rewriting franchise agreements. So I just say, be patient with us. Like this country, we're a fixer upper. Yep. This country is hurting. These these are these are really tough times. We've got racial unrest. We've got political Decision. anxiety, yep. angst, yep. and oh, by the way, there's a pandemic, a global pandemic going on, and a recession, and people are having a hard time making ends meet. And you're living at home with your five kids, and that is great. <laughs> right. But it's also, you know, it's hard. But life, life is still hard goes right on. now. So I would just like for Stuckies to be this warm, happy space where you can pull over. I'm doing my best to make it that. But also I ask people to have some empathy and know just like this country, we're rebuilding. Well, even in spite of that, I'm going to, I'm going to take us back to sort of the marketing angle. Cause that's one of the things I love about yeah. Stuckies, right? Me too. Uh, it's been fun. It is the, I mean, it, you know, the words I wrote down as I was kind of prepping was fun Americana highway, right? Like, and it, it is such a fun brand, right? Where you yeah. come in and have some pancakes and some candy and buy some stuff you don't need, but you might as well buy any. Yes, like that kind of hat, exactly. I'm putting my coonskin cap on. I gotta love that. Um, but I'll and tell it's, you what. it's fake fur, so PETA don't oh, get right. mad at me. Yeah, I'll tell you fur. what. Uh, I uh, and, and I know there's going to be a lot of people. The only reason I bring this up is because I know there's a lot of folks like me who um, there's there are there's so many pop culture reference icons like you mentioned the Irish Irishman, uh, but also uh, Arrested Development, right? Like um, yeah, uh, uh, George Lucille Bluth, her she was working at Stuckey's when she met George. Like that was the that's the storyline as part of that, and so yeah. like it just keeps kind of reintroducing itself as part of pop culture. Yeah. What? So talk to me about sort of, uh, I'd love to hear where your marketing heads at, because part of it's going to be to sort of maintain some of that cultural iconic, uh, yeah. you know, but also to sort of grow into new directions. Talk to me about what your thoughts are there. I'd love to love to hear that. Yeah, well, and I want your feedback as well, but on the cultural references, I will say I, that's been fun. And even as a kid, I, I loved it. We used to be on David Letterman's top 10 list. You remember right. those? It was so great. And I mean, we're perfect for top 10 list, right? right. There yeah. would be some reference to, I just spent $10,000 on pecan log rolls at Stuckey's kind of okay. 10 things, 10 signs you won the lottery, or I'm trying right. to, I can't remember them all. But, you know, you might be a redneck if right. you made those right. lists. I, I, it's terrific. I welcome that. And the week I took over Stuckey's, I saw this as a good sign. John Goodman was on the Seth Meyers show. Right. And he was talking about taking a road trip. And he said, well, I have to take the back roads because I got to pull over and get me a pecan log roll at Stuckey's. I'm like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> we're still alive. John Goodman. Is right. stopping at Stuckey's. By the way, his publicist has not called me back. I tried to send him a case of log rolls. And oh. I know, John Goodman, if you're listening to this podcast, I got a case of log rolls for you. Got your uh, name on it. Right. I, uh, I'll send you some healthy pecans. He's in a he's on a health kick these days. So I can do send we, him. Do we have any connections pecans. to uh, Goodman, uh, Chris? Uh, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure producer David has him in, in his. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure you'll be getting a call. I, yeah, I tried. Yeah, I, I sent his publicist a note, but I digress. Oh, the one other pop culture reference I will give a shout out to because I'm particularly proud of this one is we were in the Green Book. Yep. The movie. The I was going to mention. I, I was, yeah. And, and let me let me do my setup for that because to me that I mean your it's motto great. has always been or or one of your mottos is always that that your grandfather started is every traveler is a friend. And that's right. What I think is so, I mean, you guys lived, your company lived that long before the rest of the country lived that right. ideal. And I think that is so important to today. And I think everybody should know that Stuckey's, you're not late to the game. The reason you were in the Green Book movie was because you were in the Green Book. And for those at home who don't yeah. know, the Green Book was a book put together for African-American travelers to know particularly in the South, 
hotels they they could stay at, restaurants they could eat in without getting harassed or 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 even denied service. Mm -hmm. And Stuckey's was in that book because Stuckey's never turned away anybody. And I and I think that right. I mean that is I mean that is truly living every traveler is a friend. There's no except on that. And you know, I think today, you were talking today and all the things going on in the country and the political divisions, the concerns about the pandemic. And I think, you know, Stucky stands as a corporation that has always done it the right way. And that you did it the right way in the 50s, you did it the right way in the in the in the in the thirties. And, yeah. and, you know, that, that, that's why, I mean, the country should embrace the, re, the rebuilding of this brand because it is an example of what's, you know, I mean, and this is going to sound a little over the top, but, but I'll say that it, the companies and, and the way it's behaved historically it, it is an example of the best things about this country and the people in it. You know, the people your grandfather hired and, and, and the way he paid people in stock so that as a company, yeah. I mean, there's just so many, I could, I could go on yeah. the entire, this entire episode saying, Here's another great thing your company did. I mean, Stuckey's is, is an example of how a corporation or company should behave and act. And, and, you know, I like to say companies that do good are good. And boy, Stuckey's, uh, you know, meets that standard in my mind, you know, better than anybody. Right. Well, thank you. And I spent my first six months after I took over Stuckey's, first of all, I already had a career and I was teaching at the University of Georgia School of Law. I was teaching environmental law. And so I was still teaching part-time and running Stuckey's. And every night I was reading through my grandfather's archives. So my mom gave me six cases of my grandfather's papers and photographs that nobody had opened since the seventies. I mean, it was like opening a time capsule. That's so cool. I spent every night reading all these articles, understanding his business method. And I uncovered all of these stories about him that no one ever talked about that dealt with race relations because people didn't talk about it then. Honestly, if my grandfather had publicized that his doors were open to everyone in the deep South during Jim Crow era, his stores would have been bombed or burned down. So right. he just did it quietly. He just did the right thing. And the one of the really interesting, there were two things I discovered reading through his papers is when he started Stuckey's in 1931, he was buying pecans in the countryside and he would resell them to a pecan processor. So he'd go to the farmers, buy the pecans, sell to a processor. And he would do this after he worked all day at the family farm. It was his side hustle. So his helper with that was an African-American man named John King. So they started in the Stuckey's business together. And John King stayed with my grandfather throughout the Stuckey's career. He went on to work in the Stuckey's candy plant when my grandfather built the candy plant. And then when my grandfather really started building stores, John King owned a Stuckey's. That's cool. Back in the time when African-Americans really didn't own a lot of their own businesses, he owned a Stuckey's. And uh, the other cool thing I read is that my grandfather did a lot of quiet philanthropy and he helped a lot of African-Americans in our hometown go to college. He gave them scholarships. Mm -hmm. Again, it was never anything broadcast. And um, someone said, well, can you track down some of those people? Ooh. And I'm like, no, none of the names are there. It's just, it's in the, it's in the records that he funded scholarships. So I love that history and I like yeah. telling it and, and not so, you know, say, Look how great we are, but just I like that it was a, it was just he did it because it was the right thing to do. Right. In yeah. an era of virtue signaling today, where everybody yeah. says, "Look how great I am," that just makes it all yeah. the more impressive. And and that he would he would quietly go about that and just again do the right thing, and, and not because he wanted people to say, "Look how great he is," but because it was the right thing to do. And again, I think that's a lesson that many of us could also take to heart today uh, in our yeah. own lives. Just well, doing things do the right thing. You know, just treat people with kindness. Just be respectful yeah. and really go out of your way because sometimes people just don't have the same opportunities and you've got to make that effort. So I'm trying to do that now as we are selecting vendors for our new merchandise line. I'm asking vendors, 
not only am I asking their quotes and their pricing and what's the minimum order quantity and what's your production turnaround, I'm asking, what's your story? Right. Who's on your team? Yeah. Are you an entrepreneur startup? Do you have women? Do you have diversity? Do you have minorities on your team? Who's on your team? Right. I want to know your story. I don't want to just, to me, it's not just a vendor relationship. It's a partnership and we're trying to elevate one another. So I'm trying to bring that back into how every way we do business yep. and not just saying hashtag, you know, black lives matter. I, I would much rather just have a caring approach yeah. to how we do business every single day yeah. right. that we actually sourcing products <laughs> from minority firms. Yep. You know, um, I got a great suggestion the other day. Um, a woman told me, well, when you get a vendor that solicits you and it's not a product line that fits with your profile, but you know, let's say it's a female owned business, help refer them say, Hey, this doesn't work for Stuckey's, but I'm going to refer you to my friends over the moon pie company. You should talk to them. Like in Chattanooga. Yeah, I love Moon Pie. Uh, they're in the candy club. I, I I don't see, and that's another thing, and, and not to say male versus female, but I think women tend to be more collaborative and consensus builders. I don't see these other candy brands that are classics as competition. I right. see them as we're in this great candy club together. I love Moon Pie, Goo Goo Clusters, yeah, Anastasia, Nashville. Coconut Bars. Yeah. I've got quite a few of them. Hawaii, Ma oh. Hawaii Mountain Bars. Those are Idaho. I, I love those. Oh, yeah. Pop Rocks. Pop Rocks. Um, you know, these little wax drinks. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not a famous brand. Oh, my brand, gosh. But... That's going back. Um, yeah. Candy cigarettes. This is, this is a day in the life of a Stucky CEO. I've just, got, I've just got all the stuff, you know, <laughs> on my desk. <laughs> So well, I know marketing, we're supposed to talk about marketing. No, I mean, as you were talking, one of the things that jumped at me right away is I want to hear those stories too, right? Like yeah. about your vendors. And so like, uh, man, what a cool piece of your website that could be like, learn about our vendors. And now we get this really yeah. rich story that- Lift them up. Right. Yep. I want, I'm, so if any or marketing, I would love some feedback. I was thinking today when I send the product, like let's say you order the product online, in the package, I would love to have a little descriptor about the brand that we're partnering with. Did you know that this Stucky's hat was- Love made that by, hat too, by the way. Yeah, this is one of our new hats. You know, did you know the Stucky's hat was made by X company in small town America yeah. and it was founded by two women. Yeah. You know, yeah. just tell the story. Right. Oh, and, cool. and it does, it, I'm just looking at small businesses in general, small town America. I, I, I don't want to be with a big company that has 5,000 clients. I, and to me, it's worth my vice president of purchasing is probably going to cough up a furball, but right. it's worth paying a few pennies more to be able to elevate others. And yeah. I would like to think that consumers care about that too. So you're not just buying, you're not just buying a mug. Right. You're buying a story, you're buying a brand, you're buying a feeling. We do, I mean, I've, that's one of those values I've been teaching my kids, right? It's like, yeah. when you buy, you know, when, when you go up to the store, we go to mom and pop shops, we go to mom and pop restaurants yes. because like when we buy pancakes and eggs, Man, that's the same people that are on the soccer field with us. Their parents are yeah. coaching, right? And by us buying their pancakes, it sort of, uh, you know, sort of keeps everyone moving up. Yeah. And yeah. So, so yeah, we we definitely pay more money than we should for for eggs and milk, for hardware, for everything. I mean, because again, we'd rather support the small. And when we travel, we do the same thing. You know. Yeah. I, well, there's a saying around the studio here that that you know we all like to say you know we we wish we had Shriner money and uh, <laughs> right 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 you know affording Shriner those Shriner money <laughs> yeah sometime someday I'll take you on a tour of the house with Zoom Chris and you might question that that uh, thing but again it's it's it, it, you know it gets a little bit back to sort of you said virtue signaling uh, I remember sitting through a um, uh, 
a presentation on bravertizing, right? Like how we sort of lead with, you know, it really matters what bleach you're using because, you know, that's the, you you were holding your baby when, you know, just beckons, harkens you back. And, yeah. you know, and, and while it's, it's an interesting thing, right? Because generationally, this sort of millennial and younger is like, we want to do good and, and, we, and, you know, we'll buy, we'll pay seven cents more because we feel like we're doing a good thing. Yes. And marketers are exploiting that. And that's the problem, right? Because yes, it's doing a good thing, but it's coming at the expense of something, right? I don't know. It's, it's counter biblical, right? You know, and, and it talks about not letting your left hand know what your right hand is doing, right? Like that's how I. It's I've all been connected, raised. yeah. And you know what? That's what we're craving in this country now is connections. Right. Yes. We're all isolated, and yep. there's so much divisiveness in politics. And I loved my career in politics, but I left politics because it was so divisive. There was not a place for consensus building or moderate voices as much when I first started in politics. I, I, I shy away more and more from labels. Mm-hmm. I will support individual candidates and individual campaigns on my own personal right, not on Stuckey's, because I don't want to divide people. Right. It's about making, just, just feeling like we're part of something bigger, even though we're stuck in our houses with everything that's happening in the world. So if we can help bring back some of that comfort and that nostalgia and nostalgia matters, you know, to this day, I buy Tide detergent for my laundry because that's what my mother bought. I have no idea if it's any better or not, but it reminds me of my mom. Like that's corny, right? Like when I pour that liquid in, I'm thinking of my mom, I will, I'll buy detergent because that's what my mom bought. I don't think there's, I don't think there's anything corny. I think we all do that to a degree. Yeah. Um, there's, uh, we all buy products like that. Um, you know, in, in ter- at, to, to Paul's point, in, you know, today and, and, and the marketing and, and growing forward, your company was originally built on a franchise model. And, That's right. And, and you said that you, you know, you're, you're, you're rewriting your franchise deals. Do you, do you see yeah. your future growth as, as being you know, rebuilding that sort of franchise network or or do you plan also to have more O&O locations owned and operated, Paul? Um, uh, O&O locations as well as fact, uh, as well as your franchise. Yeah, excellent question. So we've actually got a four-part strategy for growth at Stuckey's. This is what I want to hear, okay. Yep, so <laughs> the first two are kind of intertwined, they're sales. So it's either B2B, so business to business, so selling our product to other retailers. That is the best opportunity for short-term growth. Yep. Yep. For example, three weeks ago, we got 125 Ace Hardwares in the Midwest, bam. I mean, like one day order was awesome for us. They were each ordering shippers full of our product. So the B2B line is a terrific opportunity for us. And we've really just started doing that. And it's despite there being no trade shows and it's really just us kind of getting out there as best we can, that that's been doing well for us. And then there's B2C, you know, business to consumer, direct to consumer. And that's via our online portal. Our website has been completely revamped www.stuckies.com we're on amazon because we kind of have to be but i would say go direct to the website because you're supporting us the great thing about roadside retail is that you cannot order up on amazon jeff bezos a trip to the bathroom you just can't can't and you can't fill up your gas or i mean fill up your car with gas with amazon so people still do need to pull over at Stuckey's. Uh, so pillar number three for our growth would be our store locations. That's probably our most challenging because of our legal structure and because of the operations and the ownerships, but very short um, high level strategy is moving forward. We would rather focus on a smaller number of stores that look really good Yep. that frankly harken back to a lot of what we were originally. Yep. I know everyone wants these huge, large-scale travel plazas that you almost need a GPS to find the bathroom. And I don't want Stuckey's to try to be something we're not. Right. And so I want to make sure we're still being true to that original magical feeling that you get. 
Ulietta and the Stuckies. And I don't want every single store to be exactly the same. We need to have consistency, but the consistency should be in cleanliness and high quality standards for the displays and the product being good. But as far as having a local element to our stores that are in small town America, I want to celebrate yep. Cuba, Missouri and uh, Anaway, Texas and Baghdad, Florida and Hattiesburg, Mississippi and Somerton, South Carolina and all these little towns we're in. So I want us to sell local products and really have a sense of place when you pull over. So it will be a Stuckey's, but it will be special and unique. And you'll have you'll know that you're arriving at some place that's not, you're not going to see it at every exit. So that's sort of, and I've got a big audacious idea I'm working on with the with the store. So like ask me back in a month or two, because I'm All about right. to type it. I can't say it yet, but I'm super excited about this idea I'm working on. And then fourth, I probably shouldn't say too much about it because it hasn't closed yet, but we are hopefully knock on wood in the process of um, for the first time in 1964, making our own candy again. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So um, owning a candy plant, mm -hmm. which would be so much fun. Well, might have to make a field trip. There is a chocolate waterfall that that's probably all I can say. Oh, we might we, we might have to do a show live from what? candy plant. Yeah. We're on site yeah. here at the chocolate waterfall. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and the, like the, the pecans grow under it on the conveyor belt and then they get covered in this oh. chocolate. And then they go through the little drying chamber and then they come out really warm. And oh, if you own the plant, you can grab them off the conveyor belt. I want to own the plant. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I'm just waiting for the SBA to approve this. So if you're a government official at the Small Business Administration, please um, approve our loan. Well, and um, we do have a lot of them listening. So that's yes. not, a, it's not. There we go. There we go. And I will be your biggest fan once you approve us. And um, All right. I, am, I am grateful the SBA has been supportive of us. I know a lot of folks have had challenges with some of these programs and I, you know, I share their frustration with some of the process, but I, I, it really helped us. The SBA loans really helped us. Yeah, for sure. I, I guess you know, so, we need more so, of them. <laughs> so, so <laughs> clearly, you're, you're, them. Going to, you're going to be opening uh, uh, more stores, as you said, um, whether franchise or, or O and O's, as you as you go forward. Um, my question is: Are you, are, are you going to use the same sort of de uh, uh, um, methodology in determining where to open the stores that allegedly yeah. your grandfather used? Because I read somewhere where he would go to one of your locations, drink several cups of coffee, get yeah. on the road and drive until he had to pull over to use a bathroom. Yep. And that would be the location for the next Stuckies. <laughs> now, I, I, now, hey, I don't know if you're looking for market story? research, but I could do that. <laughs> right? I mean, I so, love that story because that encapsulates what I called him Big Daddy, by the way. That is a very Southern name. That is what Big Daddy was all about. He was figuring it out. He didn't have marketing experts, not to yeah. say they would be helpful, but he didn't have the budget for that. He was scrappy and he was resilient and he figured it out. And he's like, okay, what makes sense? You get in the car, when you have to go to the bathroom, that's when you need a store. Right. That's how far apart he spaced his locations. That's cool. I love that. Story. And I think that still makes sense today. I was meeting right. with a uh, build to suit developer and they're like, well, we've got all this scientific blah, blah, blah. And they said, well, we know how we space our stores as far apart as when you need to fill up with your next tank of gas. And I said, have you ever gone on a trip with kids? Right. You don't wait till your gas is empty. Right. No, I, <laughs> your kids got to use the restroom. Yeah, that's a, there's about three stops per before each fill up in general in my family. Yeah. And, and That's not so how you I, figure it out. Right. right. You totally know, agree. I think my grandfather was a lot smarter than some of these people today who are thinking how far apart between fill ups. No, you got to pull. And when you pull over to use the restroom, I don't know about y'all, but I'm usually like, okay, well, I'm over. Well, I'm pulled over. I'm going to go ahead and fill the car up. Right. Yeah. And probably buy some iced tea. I mean, probably. Right. Yeah. And what else did my grandfather do? Nowadays, you know, everyone's got pay at the pump, right? right. So they're like, 
why do we go in? Well, back in my grandfather's day, they had full service at the pump. It was kind of the same concept. Right. He still had to entice consumers into the stores. And what did he do? He did all these great displays on the outside. He had fresh produce. And during the summer, he'd have his firework display. He had those horses, those rocking horses. You put a quarter in and they yeah. vibrate. Get all of that, you know. That stuff still works today. Right, it totally does. You know, it's interesting. What, what's yeah. old? What's old is new. I remember reading when um, when when the mobile uh, mobile I say mobile like Alabama uh, when mobile mobile <laughs> mobile mobile I'm working on it mobile. Um, but it, it's interesting that your that your grandfather you know in in the low tech days faced some of the issues because when 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 mobile introduced the fast pass payment right. um, at yeah. the gas stations. Nobody, as to your point, went in to pay, you know, cash or, you know, they, they were at the yeah. pump, bang, we're gone. And what they found was their, their in-store sales plummeted because nobody was going in and making yeah. up, a, a, you know, a, a purchase that they hadn't intended to do while they're at the, at the counter. And, and, you know, it would have been good at that point for the mobile executives to, to take a look at, and maybe they did what Stuckey's had done back in its day because, Right. Again, it was, you know, their gas stations were like, we don't want this, you know, fast pass if it means our in-store, you know, sales are going to plummet. So what's old is new. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, yeah, I, I like to say everything old is wow again. You know, you got to you gotta celebrate that. I'm switching hats, by the way, so I can I can wrap the. We can take it a little more seriously with, without yeah. the Coonskin tail. It's a... <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Chris. I, that worked for me in terms of like. I, yeah. I felt like I was talking to the chief executive officer that you are. <laughs> yeah, I, I will. I we we have um, I have Friday meetings with uh, my my vice president. And I've I've taken to putting the coonskin cap on. Please tell me you make cap. them wear the coonskin caps too. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah. As long as you work at my company. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we have fun with it. Like, um, okay, we've had a big debate about this, so. I mean, how many corporate meetings do you have serious discussions about bobbleheads? But we do with Stuckies. Not enough. So Not enough. Behind this is I'm trying to tackle some of our warehouse issues. So we own a distribution center or we, we rent it, but we operate it. We have our own distribution center. And we've got some what they call back inventory, dead inventory that just hasn't moved or it's an incomplete case. And mm -hmm. you know, we can't really ship like five products to, it's not enough for a display to our stores. So I said, I want all the dead inventory and I'm gonna put together mystery boxes and I'm gonna start selling them online and giving them away as swag, as giveaways. And box. by the way, here's the mystery box. It says mystery box at the top. So you won't know what you get in the mystery box, what right? Is it? I don't know. Who That's knows, great... you know? And you'll get, I mean, you could get a unicorn mug. I want that. Uh, you could get a toilet ashtray. I like that. I like that. Or, you know, so I found these John Wayne bobbleheads. We had like five of them. And I put one of them in a swag box for Facebook contest. And I said, all right, sign up, follow us on Facebook. You can get this swag box that has the John Wayne bobblehead. So my vice president Googles this thing and finds out that they're selling for $250 on Amazon. Cool. Yeah. And he's like, are you giving that away? And I was like, oh, it's too late. It's already... It's yeah. already out there, so I don't. I, it's probably too late, by the because you don't you don't edit the you don't air this live. But we've got one more day for people to like us on Facebook, and they can get so y'all can sign well, up. Well, this will go this will go live tomorrow, uh, the thirtieth okay. at, at the latest. So maybe the contest ends through. midnight on the thirtieth. All right, folks, you heard it here first. Yeah. You can still well, get yeah. if you have like twenty five thousand signups from Signal Mountain, Tennessee. Bam. It was there not done by a computer, I promise. <laughs> Bam. Yeah, so, I mean, we, I was trying to get us to 10,000 Facebook followers, and we had 1,000 to go, and we're, we've gotten over 800 followers in one week. So That's awesome. It's thanks to the bobblehead. Well, I love that. Uh, a couple of questions, just in terms of, as we sort of wind down on time a little bit. Uh, if folks want to get a hold of you, they have some ideas they want to share, or just celebrate Stuckey's, the Stuckey's brand. What's the best way to do that? 
Well, I'm on social media as Stucky Stop at Stucky Stop. Okay. And then also through Stuckies, just we're Stuckies on Facebook and Stuckies Pecans on Instagram and Twitter because someone already got to the name before us. Mm. And then on LinkedIn, it's just it's just my name. And I get a ton of engagement on LinkedIn. Cool. I mean, I'm, I'm getting like 100 messages a day, 250 requests to connect a day. And I, I will usually connect with you unless you right. look totally sketchy. And even then I'm probably like, okay, all right. Hey, that's how we got here. That's right. how we got here. She's telling the truth. I saw one of one of your posts. And again, and, and I, you know, I, I was saying to Paul, you know, I'm happy if I post something and I get 30 likes. I'm like, yes. You know, every one of post of yours, like seven, eight, nine hundred, a thousand. Right. So I was like, right. oh, I, I guess I'm I not know. That. Authenticity it's is phenomenal. Crazy. It's crazy how many people. I mean, follow two you months on ago, I was getting thirty likes, and then okay. the like the post I did on the Green Book, uh, we're at like three thousand or something, and then I did a post on Waffle House that's gotten thousands. The Waffle House post. So these are my internal. You know, you can view how many engagements you have. I guess right. how many people like actually look at the post. And the Waffle House post had 550,000 engagements. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. And I talked about, ha I said, happy birthday, Waffle House. They were turning 65. And I said, fun fact, my grandfather and Joe Rogers knew each other because jo uh, Waffle House was founded in Georgia, just like yeah, Stucky. So they were contemporaries. And I met Joe Rogers Sr., who was one of the founders. His son is now running the company. And I met him at a Waffle House event and he said, I knew your grandfather. So that's awesome. That is cool. I got it from Joe Rogers Sr. that he knew my grandfather. There you go. That's awesome. Well, I got to believe yep. then if, if you post on LinkedIn a, a, a link to this podcast, that's probably going to generate Millions. at least 300,000. Maybe likes, more, right? Chris. Well, I mean, yeah. you got our fan base. That's and true. her built-in fan base. I mean, I'm not going to say we're going to do Waffle House numbers. Yeah, well, I, I mean, a little bit. I mean, there's email geeks, and then there's Waffle House numbers. Right, right. We know our place. I know. In the pecking order. <laughs> but you know, when John Goodman calls, you know where it came from because it wasn't from the Waffle. Yes. And and, and Vince John Vaughan? Goodman, I want you to be our spokesman, and I can pay you in pecan log rolls. <laughs> we will pass it on. And and Vince Vaughn. If, if you reach out for the same thing, it's not happening. You've been, you know, in, until you appear on our show, we're not getting any 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 hookups with product from Stuckies. So you want to get yeah. product? I like Vince Vaughn. We like Vince Vaughn. He's from my hometown, yeah. and uh, you know, he's still he's the great white whale of of our podcast. Um, so Vince, if you're listening, and you want to get hooked up with Stuckies merch, you got to go. go. There you go. Hey, if Vince shows up on your podcast, I have two of these left. Okay. I'm just saying there might be a John Wayne bobblehead in it for you, Vince Vaughn. <laughs> Vince Vaughn, how on can you not? All right. That, yeah. That, there you go. If you're a friend of Vince Vaughn or a friend of a friend of a friend, you've got to get that message. Tell him about the bobblehead. All, all about the bobblehead. Bobble By the way, all right, I don't want to digress too much, but I'm about to. We do all the time. I Google bobbleheads to just find out a little bit more about them because like, what, how did these come about? And they actually date back like hundreds of years. I, obviously they weren't looking plastic, but they were paper mache. And you know, they had these big heads. That was sort of the origins. But there is actually a bobblehead museum. Is there? Yes, and they have a website and they have a newsletter and they have like the entire history of bobbleheads. They have all these collections of bobbleheads and I emailed the founders on Sunday, today's Tuesday. I have not heard back yet, but I just said, I absolutely love that you exist. Right. And Stucky's just needs to somehow figure out a way to partner with you because we're, we're birds of a feather, right? I mean, oh my gosh, how did you get a bobblehead made, Chris? That's uh, my head of sales. Uh, for those of you at home, this is a, a one of a kind Chris Marriott bobblehead uh, that my head of sales oh. made uh, several years ago uh, when I worked at Axiom, Nick Figaro, who was a guest on this show. Right. Um, so I, 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 I you know, I'm yeah. not comparing, you know, his value with uh, John Wayne, but I am want to point out that Paul Priceless. does not have a, 
Paul Schreiner bobblehead. So I don't have that. I don't have a bobblehead. I oh, yeah. well, well, one of us yeah. here has a bobblehead, Chris. But you could be featured in the Bobblehead Museum, is what I, I was going to say. If that somebody from the Bobblehead yeah. Museum wants to reach out uh, and get an access to this, um, I would consider a donation to the museum. I, I like to support the arts, so. Yeah, I um, donated to them. I joined, and I I was like so excited that they exist. I'm like I'm 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 joining. I'll tell you the other thing I'm I want to do. Right, so this uh, is a snow dome, one of my favorite things. I have a collection of these, and we are getting a Stucky's snow dome. What? Yeah, yeah. I've got the design done, and I'm 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 pricing them out, and we are going to have a Stucky snow dome, and a Stucky shake pen. You know the pens that oh, have right. the little. Yeah. And like it's gonna have a little car driving goes back and forth to the Stuckies. And I'm thinking I might have one that's got a pecan log roll going back and forth. I'm pretty sure okay. everyone in America wants your job. Yes. Right. <laughs> I, I know we do. <laughs> Once they find out what it pays, they might think twice, but it's right. fun. Well, there is that. There is that. Fun. Yeah. Now now there was talk. What, 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 there was talk um, of of a mug giveaway oh yes uh, on this yes. program and and folks yeah. if you th this is so i'll let stephanie talk about that in a second but but if you've looked for a stucky's mug on the internet uh you were likely found yourself on ebay where they were where they're available for the low low price of a hundred bucks and up that's right. how yeah. no. valuable a stucky's mug coffee club mug or any other other mugs it's a are. coffee it's one mug that is valued at that it's the coffee club mug it's a fire king milk glass vintage mug yep. and and so these are these are these are you know not not baubles that stephanie is going to give away this coffee mug is is a big deal so stephanie how do they win a coffee mug we know how they might win a, a john wayne or get a john wayne how do they win a coffee mug so, oh, by the way, my cat, I, I thought I was actually going to make it through this podcast without her making a cameo, but she shows up on pretty much every meeting <laughs> podcast I'm on. She's on all the Zoom meetings. Uh, all right. Oh, we, got the, we got the cats on together. Chris, where's your cat? <laughs> yeah. And mine's wearing a coonskin cap. No, she's not. She's not happy. Um, so... The mug I have available right now, I have um, two campfire mugs that were original art from an artist named Derek Yaniger. I can have those available right away as a giveaway to your listeners. The uh, Fire King mug I'm having made Ooh. and I'm doing a Kickstarter campaign for it. So that one's gonna have to be in a few months because I okay. have to have that made in China. Okay. It's, they don't make them anymore. Yeah. But right. I filmed the Kickstarter video this weekend at a classic famous diner in Atlanta called the Majestic. Mm -hmm. yep. And we actually had the place to ourselves. They closed down and let us film. Cool. And it's going to be fun. The video is going to look really good. And Excellent. So stay tuned. I've got to raise $20,000 on Kickstarter to make it happen. So it might be 30000 once I figure out all the shipping cost. I'm still figuring out the cost, but it's going to be in that range to be able to afford the mugs. But you've got another mug available right now for our listeners. Yeah, I, and I, you know, I don't have them right with me, but I will send you photos of them. They're really well done. It's an artist in Atlanta named Derek Yaniger, and he his Instagram page is amazing. It's Derek underscore art, and he does this tiki art, and he totally gets stuckies and. I, I had two pieces of original art that he did for us, commissioned, and it's on these mugs, and it's beautiful. So awesome. you can get those and um, pecan log rolls. There you go. All right, so if you want to be eligible to win this major award, um, <laughs> email us at, the first one to email us at emailgeeks at gmail.com. Did I get that address right, Paul? Yeah, it's emailgeekscoffee, I think, at gmail.com. Oh, great, we don't even know our own email address. Uh, fig <laughs> whoever gets producer David, what's our email address? I believe it's email geeks coffee at gmail. Okay, email geek for first one who emails us at email geeks at gmail. I mean, at gmail.com oh, with the correct location of producer David's recent luxury vacation. True, will win 
the coffee mugs from Stuckey's. So again, email us the correct location mm -hmm. of producer David's recent luxury vacation and you will win the coffee mug from Stuckey's. There you go. Yep. They're campfire, they're tin campfire mugs and they're they're awesome. Ten or tin? Tin, T I N, sorry, not okay. tan. <laughs> well, I only yeah. got one in the mail. Tan. They're tan mugs. Um, so I to make that clear. All yeah. right. So they're really uh, fun. As, as we wind down, you've been you've been great. Uh, but we do have our final uh, uh, thing that we go through, which is what we call our lightning round, where we okay. I will ask you, I will give you five different words, one at a time. Uh, and we want to hear the first thing that pops into your head uh, in response to that word. Um, and then we will probably dissect your answers, at least a couple of them, uh, for better or for worse. This is a way to, okay. this is how we understand a little bit how our, how our guests think. Right, Paul? Yes, that's 100% correct, Chris. Thank you, Paul. All right, so this is the road family road trip version of the lightning round. So the first okay. one, first one is snakes. Rubber, rubber snakes. Okay, no, that we'll, we'll come back to that one. Trust me, that wasn't the answer I was yeah. looking for, but that's a good one. Uh, motel. Hotel. Holiday Inn. Yeah. Oh, good one. Uh, here's an interesting one. Number three, eternity. Okay, I've got kind of a two word one, my grandfather's tombstone. Okay. Oh. He's got okay. the Stuckey's logo on it. His oh, tombstone nice. looks like a Stuckey's billboard. I like so that. So for eternity, that man is marketing. That's awesome. awesome. Even at the graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number four, allowance. Spending money. That's two words. Can I say two words? No, that's two words. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Spending that's money. Perfect. And that's that's kind of what I was looking for. Uh, and and final word is billboards. Eat here and get gas. Ah, love it. Boom. That was okay. our slogan. So, I'm actually going to put that on a T-shirt. And my mother is just aghast. She's like, that's honey, that is so, that's just trashy. And I'm like, it's perfect. <laughs> People so, will wear it. They will. they will wear a shirt that says eat here and get gas. We sold those in the 70s and people loved them. So I'm oh, bringing it back, do. eat here and get gas with I, a I thoughtful vendor who yep. has a good story. There you right, go. There you go. And for vendors you go. with good stories, send me your stories if you're a vendor and you're listening to this. Business opportunity there. Yeah. Um, so for snakes, I was thinking uh, uh, roadside attraction. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, but but I like rubber snakes is true, and I'm sure you guys have rubber. Eternity. You know, I almost said like petting zoo. You know, I was thinking petting there. zoo. Yep. You don't you don't see a snake in a petting zoo? But I went to one of those roadside petting zoos uh, about three weeks ago, and it was a it was five dollars. So this is you know the caliber of the place, and they had a rooster in the petting zoo. They had the llama too, so you know you could pet the llama. But I just thought that was hilarious. I'm like, are we supposed to pet the rooster? <laughs> <laughs> did they have any emus or anything i was that an emu instead of a llama hmm. no emus are birds so if it was a bird it might have been an emu yeah. okay no emus they may um, have had emus actually you know what i think they had they had llamas they had emus and they had the typical goats right emus make a great roadside attraction in my personal opinion if you're if you're roadside they really do. If you're roadside attraction looking for a new animal idea, check into out emus. Um, eternity, in my mind, was the time between when your five-year-old tells you they have to go to the bathroom and the next rest stop that you arrive yeah. at. As an, yeah. uh, that's eternity. Um, at yeah. least in my in my experience, that was eternity. Yeah, my second question was, uh, my question when they said that would always be, how long can you hold it? And it was right. usually like, not, I can't. I'm like, can't we just have a little buildup? Like, I think I'm going to need to stop in 30. minutes. So, no. Like, no, no. Right, it's always, it, 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 it's always a five alarm fire. It's never, <laughs> yeah. right. So it's a race against time and biology. Um, uh, and yeah. allowance was, uh, I, I, you know, to me that was, 
allowance was what your parents let you use to buy good stuff in Stuckies. You had your allowance. You always yep. got your allowance. You know, at least my parents, for the road trip, you got a little bit of money in your pocket and you went into a Stuckies and you bought something. And, uh, yep. and, and, you know, oftentimes it was lost by the end of the trip, depending on how long it was, but that was your talisman for the entire trip. So uh, awesome answers. Awesome answers. Paul, uh, any comments for you on, on the no, lightning round? I thought they were spot on, honestly. Uh, I'm glad that a snake was not petting zoo. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Deep, deep. Yeah. That I just, mm -mm, no. Yeah. I, roadside attraction. I like that. I am not you don't have to pet them. everything you see in a roadside attraction. You could just look at snakes through glass. Uh, yeah, uh, that would be okay with me as long as they're behind glass, Chris. Right. World's largest snake collection. I, we've all driven by one of those at one time or another. Who hasn't? Uh, I, I, I have seen one or two. I, what I see more of is the alligator farms yeah, yeah. in Florida. There's a, there's a reptile deal out of Edisto Island, South Carolina, and they have snakes there. Yeah. Yeah, see, I mean, snakes make good roadside attractions. I, I'm not saying they're the best, but but they're up there. <laughs> Speaking of animals, Stuckies used to have a talking mina bird in almost every store. Really? Yeah, you would walk that in would... and it would say, "Hi, my name is Polly, and I'm not for sale." It would talk to you. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and then like the sale. health inspectors clamp that down. Ah, uh, government regulation. Yeah. Right? Yeah, government relations. Darn. Well, we don't want to get in trouble with the government and bad mouth regulations too much. Anyway, um, Stephanie, you, you bet this has been a lot of fun. Uh, you've been great guests. Uh, we appreciate uh, all of the uh, stories you. that you've told. Your company's <laughs> got a great history. I love it. Third generation of the family. Um, and again, I think, uh, you know, American needs Stuckies. Uh, road trips are coming back. And Stuckies and road trips are synonymous. And, you know, the kids today, millennials, you know, get out there, get on the road uh, in your Priuses, but make sure you uh, stop at Stuckies. There you go. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. All right. Thanks, Steffi. Here what we are. What a great show. What a great guest. What a great show. Yes. Stephanie uh, was awesome. Uh, my only frustration is that there are not more Stuckies around. That's that's the that's the take. Yeah, and and uh, and she's I'm working sure, on it. I'm sure I'm sure David, uh, producer David, uh, out there, uh, you know, getting. I, I guess uh, is is that uh, my uh, most dangerous catch or whatever it's called? Are you out, are you crab uh, crab fishing or whatever they call? It? Nah, these are just some some old buddies of mine. We're on the Tennessee River down here in scenic. Uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. That's that's they call great. It the that's scenic great. city, you know, mm -hmm. the scenic city. Wait, Chattanooga's called the scenic city? Yeah. Well, you know, we're, first thing we're going to correct, Chris, is how you say if you're from the south, as we both are, you would not yeah. call it Chattanooga. David, how would you say that? Uh, uh it's, I, I mean Chattanooga. Now, uh, now you say it, Chris. Chattanooga. There you go. You got it that time. So it's like Chad. Anuga, oh, yeah. and that's it's it's. I mean, it's it's the etymology of word a little bit, right? But you always know people who are from here because they saw, call it Chattanooga. People who are not called Chattanooga. You know, it's always interesting how you know, the study of words. Uh, you, you know that um, you know there's this thing in in uh, 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 Virgin Islands at least. Uh, they uh, they may be maybe able to find it more places, but uh, they're called Johnny Cakes. Yo, um, yes. Yes. You ever had a Johnny cake? I have okay. had a Johnny cake. It's like Interesting. bacon grease. <laughs> Fun fact about a Johnny cake is it originally called journey cakes, but over time with different accents and different, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it, it journey kind of morphed into Johnny. So, uh, you know, again, friends, you're always going to learn things like Johnny Cakes, uh, you, original. You are original a game. Renaissance man, Chris. Well, you know that's what I mean? why people. You were made for this role. Let me sit at my feet and listen as I espouse my wisdom. Well, you know what? There's one of the benefits to show it, or one of the people I think I think people look forward to is what's Chris going to teach us today? Right. I know. What's producer Dave? What what fun location is he going to be right. at today? And. I don't 
at what point during the podcast is somebody going to enter Paul's room right. uh, and, and wander through the background as if we weren't recording one of the most prestigious podcasts. It's true. It's true. It, I mean, that is true. Uh, it is. And I think we can, we can all come together on that, Chris, that we are recording one of the most prestigious shows on the interweb nets. There's that bobblehead again. <laughs> well, uh, Chris, now I don't, I don't know that I want to go down this path, but I think we're going to. There is a debate tonight, and I do not want to get into the, you know, who who we're rooting for and not. That will have its own political show. Yeah, what we will I have want a political to say special. is, me, like every American, red-blooded American, will be drunk before the debate is over. Well, if you play those some of those drinking games we've seen, I think uh, that's true. But uh, it's going to be it is going to be nuts out tonight. I'm I, I'm already done with this election. I don't know about you. You know, you love this stuff. No, I don't love this stuff. I'm 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 uh, I, I, I'm I'm done with it as well. I'm tired. I, I don't watch a lot of news anymore. I've I've uh, well, we're getting we're getting to our election special. Um, which will be coming up in a couple of uh, weeks. So I, I don't want to use all our material before then. Um, no, but the point being, uh, I think we are going to watch the debate. I think we are going to have a, a drinking bingo card because holy smokes. You should join us, Chris. We'll open up a Zoom and we'll all drink together. Well, I, I would hope producer David would exercise a little bit of judgment. Uh, you know, at least, you know, he's got, he's got a show to plan, next week's show That's to plan. True. And and uh, you know I don't I, I don't expect tomorrow to be a wasted day, producer David. Absolutely no, no, David. We need you probably now more than ever because <laughs> in our incapacitated states, David, uh, we, I mean we're going to need you to really step up big. Well, and, and again, I, I I I want to speaking of producer David, uh, I want to remind our our listeners and our viewers of the exciting opportunity again that we just were talking to Stephanie about of winning a tin yep, uh, Stucky's coffee mug. Uh, again, the way to do that is to send an email as soon as you can to emailgeekscoffee at gmail.com right. and tell us where producer David Went on had his recent luxury vacation. The first person who correctly identifies that luxury vacation will win an exclusive limited edition Tin Stucky's coffee mug. David, just out of curiosity, what would you do if you were the winner of that coffee mug? Because Chris didn't put any stipulations down on who could or could not enter. Well, I think we all know that friends and family of the show are ineligible. Mm -hmm. If I need to state the obvious, if you are Paul Schreiner's daughter, <laughs> producer David's girlfriend, yeah, or even my dachshund, wire dachshund Newman, you are ineligible for this major award. Okay. Well, that being said, David, what would you do with that fantastic mug? I honestly, I'd, where where to begin? There are so many possibilities. Option number one: drink beverages out of it. That makes sense. Option number two: who knows? You know what I might do. What might you do, Paul? I might fill it full of pencils that are, I would have two cups. One would be for sharpened pencils and one that would be for needing to be sharpened pencils. And I would put the sharp pencils in the Stucky's tin mug. And then I would just use a throw away mug for the unsharp pencils. And then I would just throw the mug away, I think, every time. Oh. Interesting. I would have pictured David maybe putting on some sunglasses, taking the tin mug downtown Chattanooga right. and, you know, shaking it on a street Busking. corner. Busking. Yeah, yeah, ch yeah, chasing it on a street corner and, and uh, maybe giving away pencils to people. Uh, oh, uh, you're sharpening pencils. Joy. Chris, what would you do with that fantastic mug? Well, I know for, I, I would certainly drink coffee. Now, I don't know how much tin conveys heat. It, it's going to get hot. It's going to get warm. So 
I may just look at it and and, and place it in a place of prominence in in, in my office mm-hmm. here. Yeah. Um, build, to remind like a class me class case for it or something. Yeah. Well, well, to remind me that I that I you know I had earned it as a major award. Um, you know, but but I really want one of those uh, mugs that that we talked about I with know. Stephanie after the broadcast. I did some numbers on our bank account to see if we could pay, cover all twenty thousand dollar Kickstarter on our own. Yeah. We can't. Yeah, no, that's, no. that's, I know, I know it's, it's, it's frustrating for all of us. Um, but yeah, we're out. We're out. Oh, well, you know what, maybe she'll be nice and let us offer it as part of our merch. Yeah. Uh, on, on our website is, you know, we, we'll be a reseller of, of Stucky's merch. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Well, uh, Chris, I don't want to I don't want uh, to leave without talking about both the guests we've been able to have this season, and sort of that we're winding the season down with. I mean, I've been just overwhelmed, and I got to give you full credit because you've done a lot of legwork on that. So thank you for that. Thank you for getting such spectacular voices in our community and in our world. Um, well, that has been absolutely fantastic. So thank you to you, and thank you to them. Yeah, well, I think Paula builds. I mean, I think you know, it's it's, you know, we we've tried to put on a good a good podcast. Uh, we have, as we said, uh, to our suits' dismay, uh, veered from an exclusive email um, uh, focus to wanting to tell stories of of personal uh, uh, achievement, of yeah. of overcoming odds, of of challenging convention of, you know, just good stories of people doing good things. And, and if that builds on itself, I think, you know, when, when, when we're trying to get uh, somebody like Stephanie on the show and we can point to episodes with a Dr. Scott Zeller, with uh, right. MK Marsden, with the Joe DeSena, CEO of Spartan uh, Race, uh, with Skip Gilbert, who was just recently on, yeah. uh, CEO of US Soccer. I mean, we've been blessed and lucky uh, with the guests we've had and again, it's it, it. There's some momentum there building, right? For sure. Uh, and and so, you know, it, it it it's less my capabilities of getting these people as it is those who've agreed to be on our podcast when we were just getting started, uh, yeah. and and you know didn't have the track record that we have now. So we, so yeah, let's take this opportunity to thank everybody who's been on our show uh, up through today. Again, Stephanie, you were great, uh, and we were so thrilled to get you. Um, uh, not a little not. Not a little begging went into that, um, uh, but I'm not, you know, I, I, I'm not beyond a couple of several pleases in capital letters uh, yeah, yeah, proceeding yeah. beyond our podcast. But um, well, I'll tell you what I'm looking forward to, Chris, is the day when this whole COVID stuff's done and we can take the show on the road, yep. and film in front of a live studio audience. How fun would that be? I, you know, I, I think I, I think our fans would love it. Oh. I think producer David would love wearing right. that little headset with right. the, you know the little mouthpiece coming down, you know, holding up you know cue cards. Mm-hmm. It, it would be great. Mm-hmm. And 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 folks, we do want to go on the road. We want to come to your hometown. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we and, do. <laughs> and uh, and partially because you know what I what I my my. my my goal for when we take this on the road and we go to your hometown, your hometown, part of the, part of the fun will be, you know, I'm sure in, 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 in Chattanooga, for example, there's a famous restaurant that has an eating challenge. Uh, like the type of things they have on my, one of my favorite shows, man be food. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to have producer David do one of those eatings, like, like eat eight pounds of, of pork rinds. In you know what we could minutes. do, Chris? We could just go around the country making David eat more food than he should. You know what I, I mean? I mean, that's a show unto itself. That is a show on its own. Uh, you know, producer David versus food. You know, and, right? And, and <laughs> well, these are all great ideas that will be discussed before we <laughs> before we totally lock down the show. So, again, if you're if you're a fan of the show, uh, you have any suggestions? Uh, again, where Paul, where do they reach us? Uh, emailgeekscoffee at gmail.com. We also have that fantastic website. Yep. Emailgeekspodcast.com. Um, and uh, yeah, 
stay in touch with us. We've got all the social channels now, I think, except for the Instagrams and the TikToks. Yeah. But we do have the Twitters. We have the, um, I guess we only have the Twitters. But the point is. And the face. Uh, no, and, and, the, and the YouTubes. Yeah. We want to hear from you. Let us know what you're liking, like, and comment, subscribe, do all the things that people do. Yep. And as always, we appreciate your loyalty. We appreciate you spending time with us. We know you have a lot of other podcasts you can be listening to. So if you've gotten this far, right. again, our heartfelt thanks uh, that you stuck with us <laughs> through thick and thin. And we got some great shows that are coming up to wrap up this season. So we look forward to seeing you and uh, sharing an hour or so with you again. Remember cats? Oh, are kittens baby are baby cats. Kittens are baby right. cats. There you go. Thanks, y'all.